All right, you want the you want a riff? Yeah, I want a riff. Oh, <laughs> oh, wait. oh my god. <laughs> well, you can't talk over it. I was just I wasn't talking. I was, <laughs> I was, I was, bang, I was head banging. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Clapping's not allowed. Oh, yes. Somebody <laughs> roll with your rock and roll. That's his battle, baby! Yeah. Nice. Nice. Anthony Cap for everybody. Woo! I, I think that was your best, best intro. Yeah. Because... <laughs> You are better when you're mad at me. You all do. I think that's what, that's what keeps this show going. When you guys get angry at me, it just good shit happens. So, <laughs> I'm like one of those, those those coaches that nobody likes. Oh, yeah. Eventually. yeah. But it like gets the, the team going. It gets the team going. It's like whiplash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll throw, I'll throw a microphone at people for sure. <laughs> That's how I coach. Yeah, I just <laughs> comedy coach. I just throw you hack, and I throw the microphone. Um, that's it. I would like to do that to people. I would like to punch people. Anyway, what am I talking about? Hey, good to see you, buddy. Um, good to see you. Been a crazy week. Our crew's kind of banged up. Yeah, but we're doing it. We're hanging in there, man. <laughs> I'll go ahead and bring in these, these banged up people. All right, well, let's bring everybody in. Uh, the, the other co host of this amazing show, We've got for Adam Holds and Jeffrey Paul, everybody. Hey. Hey. Yeah, so when, when, Don't when talk to the guitar. Yeah. You yeah, can't talk over the guitar. When Dustin was coaching me, I can tell you, he, he threw a mic at me. I did. Well, kind of a, a mic metaphor, you know. I'm pretty rough on guys, but I make you all stronger. That's why you're all doing good. Oh yeah. So, uh, so Jeff, you had a rough week. I heard you uh, just you got hit by a car. That's that's. I wow. I, I, I I did. I was. Um, yeah, my I doing? had a well, I had a plan. I, what I was going to do is I I went to go park my car in the gym that I work out at, and my plan okay. was to walk across the street to get a haircut. Um, then come back and work out. And then I was supposed to be on the road this weekend up in uh, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Okay. So this is on Thursday. I had city spot on, on Thursday and then I was going to leave on Friday. Um, the first part of the plan worked out. I did park my car in the, uh, in the gym parking lot. Oh, at least there's that. It's the, wa- <laughs> it's the walking across the street part that didn't work out quite right. That's where I was walking. Let me, has any, besides that, has anyone else gotten hit by a car? No. Okay, let's don't just breeze over that. That's a big deal. That you can I like, I like yeah. that you're just Anthony like everybody knows Anthony. Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody yeah. knows that. Yeah, it's not a pleasant experience. Um, oh, no, it's weird. I can tell you. So I'm I'm walking and I have just back it up, back it up. Were you jaywalking? No, I was in the crosswalk. Oh man. And wow. a car, I'm walking across a, a woman who's she wasn't paying attention because she must have been looking at the timer. And oh, saying, oh man, I, I only have a few seconds. I got to hurry up and make the turn. Otherwise, I'm going to be, mm. God forbid, be stuck at the light. So she goes yeah. to make the turn. And uh, I looked, I stopped. She looked, she kept going. And oh yeah, I, I wound up getting hit by, by a car. I took like the, it was a Cadillac, well, SUV, a Cadillac oh. SUV. Oh, that's a big car. Like, yeah, one thing, yeah, it was like uh, a little tiny smart car but that's that's a big deal <laughs> no and, like and be alive yeah i mean the impact of it i saw the tips of my sneakers up in the air did we lose dustin oh dustin left <laughs> oh he had enough of this story <laughs> maybe he got hit by a car <laughs> right <laughs> I, don't, I don't know <laughs> oh, man that's so they were making the turn it was like yeah. a, you got hit on the left side, you said? So, um, yeah, I got hit on the left, but I got injured on the right because that's where I fell. So I'm walking straight yeah. and the car was making the turn from another street on, you know, making a left. Yeah. So here's ex- me, here's the car and bam. That's exactly what happens to me when I got Were hit. Were you in a crosswalk? Yeah. Yeah. Cause and I, I had I the could- light and the person wasn't paying attention and they made the, they made that same turn and I got hit on the, uh, 
on left the left side. side and I landed on my on my elbow and my my What hip. happened to you? Well, I was okay. Um I was I was walking to the sidewalk cafe. To oh do sure, a show. yeah, in the East Village. Yeah. And I, I still went to the show. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to do Greenwich oh. afterwards, but I got a text that, that show it was like a weekday. So that show got canceled. So after the sidewalk show, I was like, I'll probably go to the emergency room, get an x-ray. <laughs> any 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 injuries or anything? <laughs> no. Uh I mean I was sore for a couple of days, but they yeah. I wanted them to do more x-rays because I told them about the whole side, you know, I landed on my hip and stuff, but on the elbow first. So when I did the x-ray, they were like all right, just put the tip of your elbow right there. They only x-rayed the tip of my elbow to see if it was broken. I was yeah, like, see, what about I, everything else? Yeah, I was I was bleeding from my face. Oh, um, I couldn't, I, I, I had blurred vision. I mean, I was really kind of like wow. banged up, man. I got. I took a full shot. Yeah, um, so I wound up. I wound up going to the, um, the triage unit and, you know, they, they, you get there and they, there's about 15 people there. There's people taking off your shoes. They, they're taking off your, your your sweatpants. They took they take, take off your. I mean, they're they're probing you. Someone stuck their finger in my ass, right? And, and I hear them saying, "Unclench, unclench." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, "That's not where I'm hurt." You know, but the, what they're doing, like I found out later on, they're doing it. They're checking to see. Uh, if you have any spinal injury or oh. uh, internal bleeding, that's what that is. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't uh, know that either. My wife came comes into the room and she's like, "I'm very, very cold because my body was in shock. That's what happened when yeah. your body's in shock. You, you know, you're not pumping as much blood. I'm, I'm cold. Uh, I'm involuntarily uh, shaking." Um, it doesn't say tech issues. Tech issues, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'm involuntarily shaking. I mean, it's really, really like a, like a scary thing. They're x-raying everything. Then they take me in. I mean, this is all happening like that within an hour. Yeah. Um, they, they're giving me the uh, CAT scan, you know, just to make sure that like, I have no head injury. Um, yeah, they yeah. Weren't, yeah, they weren't sure about what uh, this what they said. My nose was broken. It doesn't look broken to me. It feels sore, but not broken. My elbow, they weren't sure what it is. It's all discolored. It's still as swollen oh. as the other day. Um, it's all discolored. It's purple. It's gross. Um, so I have to, I'm going to a doctor tomorrow. I got to go to a, see another different doctor oh, on damn. Monday. Wait, and, so is your nose broken? I mean, does it look at you? No, but that doesn't no. mean it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, it's not like some people get it broken and it's like shifts yeah. or whatever, you know, it's like, in the wrong place, but you could have like some kind of fracture. On, well, maybe. I, I mean, I, I again, it feels sore, but it's not to me. It doesn't feel broken. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see tomorrow, and I'll see okay, you on back, Monday. Sorry yep. about that. Hey. Hey. Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. We can hear you. Yeah, I, I got hit by a car. On the That's what we thought. <laughs> 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 Oh, so you guys spent like six minutes talking about broken yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, we just yes. kept talking about the accident. Yeah, and getting hit by a car. Um, yeah, I just think it's insane that like you both got hit by a car and you're both alive and here on this show. I think there's the odds of these <laughs> two people involved in a, a podcast show or, you know, got hit by a car. I remember, and Anthony... You got, would you get hit in the butt or something? And then you fell down? What happened to you? <laughs> I, it was a, the same exact thing that happened to, to Jeff. The person yeah. was making the same turn. I got hit on the same side. I was like uh, on the hood of the car. And then I had my guitar on my back because I was going to a show. And uh, I landed like on my elbow and my hip. And then uh, somehow ended up like in a sitting upright position <laughs> because yeah. of the guitar. <laughs> hilarious um <laughs> not hilarious but hilarious you know what I mean? like if you're, if you're gonna triple over a car you know might as well have your guitar with you you know I yeah. think that, that's <laughs> your guitar saved your life for once actually I it might have yeah it ruined your life most, <laughs> of, most of your life but it saved your life then <laughs> like uh, you picked up a car i picked up a guitar in your life usually it's not always the best idea but you know it worked out this time that's funny I made and it, I made it to the gig on time. I was walking to a show. You didn't go to the hospital. That's amazing. 
afterwards, after the show, I, one of the other performers uh, drove me to the emergency room after the show. That's how you guys die. You're supposed to go to the emergency room right away. Like, I love, that's how stupid comics are. We're like, yeah, but it's so hard to get that seven minutes. So yeah. I'm just going to risk my life. I wasn't even going to go at all. I was supposed to do two shows that night. And one of them got canceled while I was at the first one. So I was like, all right. I'll if make you, time to go to the emergency room. If wow. you had a fracture, Anthony, that that's a guarantee. That's a slam dunk guaranteed lawsuit for you. Yeah, I just and, had some bruises. Yeah, but also, <laughs> I mean, who wound up paying for those medical bills? The uh, the the driver. Okay, I didn't want to make a I didn't want to make a big deal about anything. Um, you know, like police showed up, and I was like, "Yeah, it's fine. I feel all right." But I I I I knew from when I was in a car accident that uh, potentially I was just in shock. So I was like, I think I'm okay, but I want to make sure. So I got his information. And uh, when I started getting calls from the hospital for the bill, I was like, you got to talk to this other guy. <laughs> that's, that's not for me. Yeah. I mean, that, that's how, that's how you, you cover yourself. You, you go see the lawyer right away. That way it goes through something called no fault insurance. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. All right. This is becoming less and less rock and roll. <laughs> um, so the first album it goes really well. Uh, Crash Test Dummies is the album. It's <laughs> 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 on point with the theme today. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> hey yo, I, I was on a show called Crashing. Hey yo, <laughs> uh, any crash thing, please feel free. Um, so I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a, a wonderful music town. Uh, I, today I was, I got up early and I, I kind of walked around. I went to the Johnny Cash Museum Ooh, uh, sweet. down there off, uh, off uh, Broadway. Uh, really cool museum. I'd never been before. It was great. It's like, uh, you know, it's just going to be uh, Patsy Cline on the top floor and Johnny on the bottom. And it's just really interesting place to just see all the, you know, uh, had his first, you know, Air Force uniform to his first guitar and had all the, you know, stuff from the Sun Record Studio stuff. And then they had like really cool kind of um, interactive things where you could, uh, you know, they would see all the covers that everybody had done of like Johnny Cash songs. And there's so many covers I didn't even know existed. Like, uh, you, like you put in Ring of Fire and then everybody comes up. Adam Lambert did a Ring of Fire cover. What? Uh, Grace huh. Jones did a, a Ring huh. of Fire cover. I mean, it was like all these like a Dick Dale and his was badass. And like, you know, so it was really cool to, like, oh, that's just, cool. you know, hear all the covers and stuff and, um, you know, all the interactive things. And they'd have like, uh, you know, him with the ragged old flag, the, you know, the, the what is it like the Museum flag. of Television and Radio where you can p punch in um, a cover? That's and, what I just and... said. Interactive. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I, you gotta remember, I got, got hit, hit by, by a car. car. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel a soft on you today. I understand. I will. I will be so hard. But, but yeah, it's, it's interactive. It's like you put headphones on and you push buttons, and they have all this stuff. Then they just have you know all the stuff. And then the last thing on the way out was the that sounds cool. They had uh, they had the chair that he sets in in the hurt video. And wow. so, oh, nice. then they play. Then they played "Hurt" the video right over the chair, and mm. it's just really cool. That's a, I didn't realize how cool that video was. And such yeah. a you know beautiful song and everything. So yeah, so that was really cool. It was great to uh, you know just do something like that. I love. I'm a nerd for that kind of stuff. And then also, then I went to the National Museum of African American Music because uh, you know I'm cultured like that. Um, that was also very cool, you know. So a lot of lot of early hip hop stuff, all the way to R and B, and it was just like really cool shit. Um, let's see, I got albums from that place. I got I got this album from uh, the African American Museum, Kingfish. and uh, this is Kingfish. This is uh, this is what who they're hailing as the next great guitarist, the next Stevie Ray Vaughan, the next you know, kind of buddy guy, this, you know, I've heard a little bit from this guy. I've heard some stuff on, on title and whatnot, but you know, I just grabbed the album. I said, you know what? I bet it's good. You ever do that where you just grab an album? You're like, I know it's, it's probably going to be. Yeah. And so this is going to be, th this section is called just random buys. So I bought this one and I uh, will we'll report later on how good it is, but I've heard a couple of songs and he's like, just got to, you know, I know you don't like buddy guy very much, but he plays with buddy a lot. And uh, he's a good prodigy. Like he was like one of these like 14 year olds that could just like, you know, just rip on a guitar. 
And uh, so, yeah, so I got this. And speaking of 14 year olds that were just good, this is another guy. Uh, this is more country music. And this is this guy is really blowing up. Uh, Joshua Ray Walker and uh, big old boy. And uh, he's also was very uh, looks like Zach Amico. Yeah, he started with like, <laughs> it's like a uh, Newman. <laughs> Newman from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's never, there's never a shortage of fat jokes on this show. I mean, we destroyed meatloaf. I get it. He is a big boy. And uh, Zach wishes he was as talented as this guy. This guy, uh, this, guy is, this guy is amazing. He's like, uh, has kind of a, you know, I know he looks big and whatever, but. This guy is great. He's out of Dallas. Uh, he does. A, it's a lot of kind of ballad, old school country, a lot of kind of a Merle Haggard sound. And uh, I love him. This guy's great. So make fun of him all you want. He's got a really good voice. We like fat people on this show. And nobody on this show's in shape. So anyway. Um, <laughs> Anthony's too skinny. I'm almost in shape. Jeff, oh, that's got a problem. And then, you know, Adam almost looks good. All right. So we have uh, this last time I got, we, we covered Sturgill Simpson. I've uh, been wanting this album. Oh, yeah. This is his new album. Yeah. And I'm uh, pretty excited here. This one, uh, it's got a lot of cool tracks. It has a uh, Juanita, which is uh, Willie Nelson's on this track. And so excited for that too. These are my random buys. So Joshua Ray Walker, uh, Chris Stone Ingram, not the Miko or whoever that guy was, and certain something. So yeah, so that's my random buys. Andy, have you bought anything lately? I did. Uh, <laughs> I went to the record store for Record Store Day, yeah. and uh, there was a Record Store Day exclusive that I got. It's a hey. pic- picture disc of uh, Devo. There we go. Nice. Uh, so here you can see we covered them on the show. It's them as as uh, potatoes, <laughs> and then on the back nice. it's got this. Very what songs cool. are on it? Uh, this is uh, oh no, it's Devo. I don't know if this is a real like actual album. There's Time no out music for on that fu- album. Time out for fun, Peekaboo, <laughs> out of sync. This is not an album that I'm familiar with. Um. Deep Sleep, Speed Racer. Yeah. I don't know these songs, but I had to get right. It's a it's a random buy. It's yeah. Like you just, sometimes you just buy it because that's part of it. That's what we used to do when we were kids. You don't always know. Sometimes you bought you bought an album because the album cover looked cool. Yeah. And then yeah. You know, and this all there's f- uh, fifty five hundred of these. Wow. So the, I figured that's I gotta cool. get it. And then yeah. I bought two copies of an album that I um, already have. But I never saw this Japanese import of uh, McCartney, Paul McCartney's McCartney album. So oh, I got nice. that. And Let me then... see the back. Can I see the back? Oh, very cool. He's not wearing the wings necklace, is he? Uh, <laughs> no, that's a, that's a little. That's his baby, or that's okay. some baby. Me and my cousin made that necklace. That's why I always ask. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, it's got, it's got like the inside that has the lyrics in Japanese and stuff like that. Oh, and then cool. I bought this bootleg, same album, but this is like a, I didn't know where it was from. Uh, the guy at the record store said he thought maybe it was from the Philippines. Oh, cool. So it's, uh, it's, uh, so you buy multiple copies of the same, just in different, like, you know, Japanese and stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, because I never I never saw it before. This one's cool. It's got, I mean, it looks pretty it's the same, it's bootleg-ish. The exact, same, exact same music or no? Yeah, I think so. I haven't listened to it yet, so I don't know if it sounds, I'm sure the bootleg maybe doesn't <clears throat> sound quite right. Interesting. Uh, That's, you're an interesting collector. I've never heard of anyone buying three of the same album. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're pretty cheap. <laughs> So I, I do that with some Beatles stuff because, you know, they have like the uh, stuff Capital put out and then the stuff that sure. Apple put out. So I, I, I do that well, you, sometimes. You can move it on eBay or something. So, you know, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So that's Every what style. I got on record store day. What about you, Adam? Did you buy anything? No, you know, I um, I was going to go to the record store and I heard there was uh, the line. And this was about a couple hours after they opened on Saturday. The line was all the way around the block. So talk about random buys. A couple weeks ago, I went to the record store and picked up um, the new album from mm-hmm. actually the debut album from Wet Leg. And, oh, um, yeah. Oh, you and, got it on vinyl. Yeah. 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 I picked up on vinyl and it was I had heard one song of theirs. I heard um, 
they're they're a very hyped up uh, UK female duo, and um, they um, they just this is their first album, and everybody said the hype is real. This is a great album, so I only heard that one song, picked it up. It is a great album too. It's great, yeah. But that was a, a random buy. Um, I do that. I, I do that often. I also picked up uh, Sam Cooke. A uh, it was oh, a uh, I think it was called the. It basically covered his whole career. It was a double vinyl. Uh, I can't oh, remember the double. name of it, but um, but I still have to still have to listen to that one. Very cool. Yeah, it's uh, that's you know that's a beautiful thing when you see a line around a record store. I mean, I yeah. went to this record store, uh, Ernest Tubbs, which has been around since 1947 in Nashville, and they're actually closing. It was so depressing. It was like they you know they didn't have a lot of selections. They were kind of like just selling everything off, but. Uh, yeah, so that's I think that's the two things that's happening in America where it's like there's record stores that can't afford their lease because they're in a place like Nashville, and then yeah. these these other little places are kind of getting trendy in neighborhoods where well, people support it. Yeah, well, so. you have uh, in Nashville, you have uh, Jack White's Third Man Records there, and oh, yeah. um, I, I don't know, have you have you been to that one? Is it is it a I record have. store like they sell stuff? Okay. Yeah, is that they where have- the recording studio is? Yeah, you, like you can go in and record something. Yeah, like, they have that the recording booth. Yeah, I did. I did that when I was in Nashville. Oh, neat! Did yeah, you bring you, the guitar? Huh? Be able to do it with the guitar? Yeah, I went in. I had my acoustic guitar, and I did. Uh, um, I did a song. You record for like I don't know what it is, two minutes or something, and then they give you the record there. It's like twenty bucks. Um, I mean, it doesn't totally sound it. very good, but no, but it's I, fun thing to have. It's fun. Yeah, I did. I did a few, a couple of them actually. I asked if you had your guitar. No, I brought in a gazoo. Yeah, because <laughs> no, sometimes there's not enough room in there. You know, it was to, hard to yeah. fit it in sometimes there. Sometimes just it's just voice. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you All play right. over and you sing over a track. It was a little awkward. I was kind of like, you know, because right. it's like a phone booth size. Exactly. Thing. Exactly. So it was. A, a, I was trying to position it just right. I'm just like playing it like this. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta switch the ukulele, maybe. Yeah, that would have been perfect. Yeah. Nice. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, so we're kind of doing some fun stuff today here on Dustin's Vinyl. Um, you know, we we realize that our show's better when we uh, pick music for the other people that they don't really like that much. And so that's kind of it's some weird genre we do here now. And Jeff, whoa, wow. Okay, I feel like I was uh, trying to listen to your, your album. And man, uh, why don't you break us in and then I'll let you know how okay. I talk about it. So the album I, I wanted to introduce Dustin to was the fifth studio album uh, of Southside Journey and the Asbury Jukes called The Jukes. Came out in 1979. Uh, if you're not familiar with Southside Johnny, he was, a uh, you know, still is around, a hardcore Jersey Shore band. Um, hmm. The first four albums were produced by Stephen Van Zant, who is, you know, people oh, know as, you know, from yeah. uh, the East Street, Street brand. He was on uh, on uh, Sopranos, but he did not record this album. This was a little bit of a departure for uh, for Southside Johnny and the Jukes. Uh, this was produced by Barry uh, Beckett. And I thought, you know, I love this album. I thought he gave the band a little bit more of a polished sound on the record. Songs like uh, Security and uh, especially Vertigo have that 70s soul sound. Um, what they what they did was they they started to get away from the the barroom sound. You know, uh, you know, being like, you know, the the, the party band that uh, little Steven uh, kind of like had them groom into. Um, I think it has a great opening track in All I Want Is Everything. I think other standout tracks are I'm So Anxious, Living in the Real World, Vertigo, as I said. Um, but this was the band getting away from Jersey Shore, Springsteen Sound. Um a little history about this album. This was a very uh, anticipated album by the band because it was coming off the success uh, of the 1978 uh, album, Hearts of Stone. You know, that was a big hit. And the huge hit on it was uh, I Don't Want to Come Home. When like I've seen Southside a million times in concert, and this is his uh, closing song. Um, he, when he, you know, if you go down to the Stone Pony anytime during you know during the eighties or nineties, mm-hmm. you know, um, Southside would pop in, and you would have Bon Jovi and Springsteen, and all like the Jersey uh, luminaries would come in, and they would all kind of jam in on this song. Um, but people were disappointed. 
uh, in this album uh, because it didn't have that Van Zandt uh, Springsteen sound. Um, I love the power horns in this song. Um, it, yeah, you know, I, I really think, you know, it, it, it gives it like a full full sound, um, much, much different than say an R&B flavor, like a uh, earth, wind and fire, but it is a full sound. Um, there's a lot of interaction uh, between uh, Springsteen, uh, E Street Band and the Jukes. Uh, like for instance, Gary Talon, Vinny Lopez, um, they were in both bands, you know, um, they all grew up together. In fact, the two guys I just mentioned, they all went to the same high school together and all graduated together. So, you know, the Jersey show, I mean, I grew up uh, uh, in this, you know, right around this era and I kind of was, you know, I was around that scene. I, I remember you go, again, you can go in any weekend night, any weekday night and these bands would be playing and they, they were great. And, you know, we're talking like, 2,000 people at like, you know, outside and when drinking and partying. And that's what this is to me. Good, fun partying music. So Dustin, what did you think of them? Well, I think I did the homework wrong. I couldn't find um, on my title. I ended, I think I got the live version of these songs. And did you so reach I, up I, and I, touch I, the sky? Is that the album that you looked at? It was just the live version of the Jukes, uh, Southside Johnny, just the Juke album. I I think it was most of the songs that were on the album. They are. Just, that's right. That's the reason why I asked. Yeah, it was a live version. So a live version, you know, is definitely a good time. And, uh, you know, this music, it reminded me of kind of like, you know, the E Street Band and the Blues Brothers were a wedding band. You know, that's what I feel. <laughs> that's, yeah. a good, that's, a, that's a good, uh, that's a good analogy. <laughs> I it mean, is. it's 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 a good time. Like, I think if I was drinking, I'd probably enjoy it a little bit more because I feel like uh, <clears throat> at least with the versions that I heard, I don't know if they were as, you know, kind of, you know, kind of bigger sounds, you know, from, from the actual album. But the live versions are, you know, you could tell they're they're in Asbury Park. They're having a good time. It's like it's a lot of swing kind of rock and a lot of stuff involved. A lot of, you know, to, sometimes it's like too many white guys involved and, you know, an R&B sometimes can kind of, you know, bother me a little bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy that they're, you know, they're talented musicians, but. It's just something I feel like I'm aging as I'm listening to it. And that's, that's, <laughs> I feel like, you know, I should check my cholesterol about four songs in. You know, I feel it just takes me, it just, some music ages and some music stays. And this music, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't grab me. Um, and it's, it's, it's thing with the whole kind of Springsteen and all that stuff where it's like, it's, it's very well done. It's, you know, these are two, some of the best of the best musicians, but I don't know. They're just sometimes it's a little too, little too Jersey for me. You know, I can't, I can't, it's, it just feels like it's this particular sound that, that, that just, I can't, I can't kind of lock into, but, um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's some good stuff. I just feel like, um, it's just, again, it's just, it, it just feels like a wedding band or something. It feels like I should be doing hmm. mashed potato, you know? So. I think you're right about them being very Jersey. I mean, there, there's been arguments that they are probably more Jersey than Springsteen is yep. Jersey. You know, that, that yeah. that's, that's always been the thing. And I think Adam, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he kind of like broke out before Springsteen did. Well, they were, I think they were playing around the same, they had started around the same time. Um, I think they were, I was reading about this before too. Um, they were playing in, in state, they both had similar, they had, they were playing in the same bands. And th I think, um, you know, obviously Springsteen, his star status elevated so much faster. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I guess I, I always thought like I always thought the Southside Johnny was kind of a Springsteen light that he was he was always playing in the shadow of Springsteen, but they were always playing together. The contemporaries. Right. Right. So it's pretty interesting. You know, there's a um, so there's a hundred different musicians that have been associated with the Asbury Jukes. And wow. um, and, and you were saying a couple of the, the East Street members before you also had Clarence Clemens playing with them. You had a. Uh, uh, Springsteen's wife, uh, Patty, uh, oh, Patty Scalife. Scalife, yeah, she played yeah. with them also. Yeah, I see. I remember Gary Town because you know I, I did work on a couple of Springsteen tours, uh, 
and Gary was the bass player, you know, during, on those tours. And, you know, he was a really quiet guy, but nice guy. And, you know, we talk about, you know, Southside Giant, because I'm, I'm a big fan of, of this guy. I, you know, I, a lot of fun. I think, I think Dustin kind of is right about kind of like Springsteen is almost like more serious. Well, yeah, it's this soulful. guy is... Yeah. yeah, this guy is not as serious, but it's 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 part like, like you can you can see like if you had a couple of bucks and you're playing, you know, you're getting married at a country club, this could be the wedding band. I could see that. I, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, I mean right. it's it's a good time, you know, and it's like and so I understand the attraction to this kind of music, but, but yeah, I mean, as much as I don't like Bruce Springsteen, I do like his story. Um, I do like him lyrically. I like him lyrically probably the best. Um I like it better than the music, to be honest with you, because I think his lyrics are amazing. It's just the other stuff I just can't get into. But um, but yeah. So, Anthony, what do you think? Uh, I feel pretty similar to you, Dustin. Uh, although the opening of the first track, at first, I was I thought it was going to be kind of something different. It to me, I was like, oh, this maybe is something more along the lines of like television or one of those kinds of bands. Um, and then no, uh, on the radio or, or just television, the television, the, the band, oh, television. Just, okay. uh, I don't know. Just the first few seconds. I was like, oh, this could be something like like that. And then the horns kicked in. And I was like, all right, this is a little different. But and then the vocals came in and I was like, oh, Springsteen. <laughs> 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 but then uh, like for the, the, the next couple of songs were like a little bit slower and I was picking up kind of a uh, almost a Van Morrison kind of vibe from the vocals, like Springsteen meets Van Morrison. Um, and like, it, you know, I thought it was fine, uh, but it's it's not something that I think that I will uh, uh, revisit. It, I, I don't think it's for me, but I, I, it's fine. It was well done. Good musicians. You know, I could see people enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's the thing about music. It's just like certain people attracted to it. I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's funny how you say there is actually a Jersey sound, which I think that <laughs> uh, Springsteen and those guys, I guess this guy as well, kind of created this thing. I mean, at least with Bon Jovi, as bad as they are sometimes, I still feel that they did something a little different than what was happening in the, the, the Jersey bar scene. Like, I feel yeah. like at least they were headed towards something a little different. I mean, I'm not a huge fan, but, you know, I'll crank up some Bon Jovi when I'm by myself. I'm, you know, but, when you're um, by yourself. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not like, hey, let me turn this on. I mean, I will is kind of like a, a flashback, but I don't necessarily, you know, um, I don't think they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. How about that? Guy? Really? Before, I don't think Adam, they should do be. Do you remember before it was Stalin Ballroom? Yeah, it, you know, it was Hunka Bunka Ballroom. Oh, Hunka Bunka, yeah, yeah. Hunka Bunka, Hunka Bunka, Hunka Bunka in Sayersville. <laughs> oh, I don't speak Jersey. That's before it before it became like this eighteen hundred standing room type of concert venue. Um, it was kind of like a bar type of thing, uh, and I remember going there to. I saw Bon Jovi before they were, before uh, even Runaway was released on an album. And, you know, they, you know, they, they you knew they had something, um, but this was the, also the time of like Twisted Sister and mm. T.T. Quick and Zebra, like all those bands that wind up uh, eventually getting signed, you know, and they ha- they were just like a step behind them. And then after them, it was Skid Row. Like they all kind of like helped each other out. But yeah. that's that, that's what that's what that was. That's what that well, that was from. Well, with Bon Jovi, he uh, he even said that he was influenced by Southside Johnny. And in the, um, I guess it was in 1990, he toured with Southside. He he was a part of the the, the He's Asbury an Jukes. honorary Juke. Yeah, but um, but we were talking before about Springsteen with uh um you know with him and and Southside Johnny at the same time. So Springsteen actually wrote the early hits for Southside Johnny. I think the Fever. There was uh there was another song too. So oh, really? um. Wow. So that could he, also, he also recorded it as well, Springsteen. He does a yeah. great version of the Fever. Yeah, but um, but it, it's amazing though. I mean, I you know, I'm I'm a New Jersey native. I I born and raised. I in, in my 44 years, I never actually listened to an entire Southside Johnny album. 
until this one. But um, I, I think part of it too is that, you know, uh, I, I mean, I'm a big Springsteen fan, but I always thought, you know, I always thought that Southside Johnny was just, you know, Springsteen light or he, you know, especially during like my formative years in the, in the, the nineties, you know, Springsteen wasn't hip. He wasn't cool to listen to. And so, you know, I listened to him in the eighties, but um, uh, Southside Johnny was never on my radar musically. Um, he was always the, you'd always see him. Uh, you, I mean, you see his band all the time uh, listed at state fairs in New Jersey or, or the arts and music festivals, stuff like that. You would just, he just seemed like a, a local fixture. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess, you know, you'd probably put him up there as maybe a top five New Jersey band, you know, with or New Jersey music, musician, along with, you know, uh, Springsteen and Sinatra and Bon Jovi. Um, but you know, I, I, I like this album. I thought it was, I thought it was a, uh, it, it was a good, it was a good listen. I think, uh, there's definitely, I got to quickly pull this back up, but, uh, there was one song I remember last night, which just sounded entirely like springs it actually sounded a lot like rosalita hmm. and that's the funny thing because they, they were criticized for this for not sounding enough like springsteen for right. getting away from the whole springsteen sound but, that's, but after I mean, that, four albums of almost being a carbon copy you know you i could see you wanting to go in a different way i mean van zent and uh, bruce didn't write any of the songs on it it was the new guitar player and Southside Johnny himself, who wrote most of the music and lyrics on this. You know, it's interesting when like an artist um, is involved um, with like a newer band or maybe this is necessarily maybe a newer band, but it's definitely, you know, Springsteen obviously got successful and then tried to produce and, you know, kind of create these guys a sound, you know, for that era or whatnot. But I feel like, you know, like with Prince, it's like what was so great about Prince is like he would, you know, be involved in a band like the time or Sheila E or something. And they really they didn't mm -hmm. sound like Prince. You know, they kind of they had their own kind of sound. And I think it, I don't know. I think it's sometimes it's kind of weird when a band is in, heavily involved and then what your creation is kind of it goes back on kind of what you do. And so I, I like it when, you know, somebody gets behind an artist, you know, like Kiss discovering you know, Van Halen and, you know, obviously an opposite in the direction of the band. And so I don't know. I just kind of it's like it seems like kind of one of these self-indulgent things where it's like, hey, we want another band that's kind of like us. And, you know, we'll just we'll play on it, too. And it's kind of our, you know, kind of our playhouse, you know, with this band. So I don't know. I think it's like if you're going to, you know, bring a new artist and bring something new, you know. Yeah, uh, Jeff, you were, you were saying before about the Jersey Shore sound and uh, and seeing Southside Johnny back then. Now, did that sound end when, uh, it, I guess maybe in the early 80s, did that end when uh, they started bringing more cover bands to the shore instead of original music? Uh, in the mid 80s, okay, like say, I'm going to say 84 to up until like the 90s. You know, the, you know, um, yeah, the sound started to change, you know, um, with with the cover bands. I, I like again, this is all very like Jersey related. So you had places like the Colonel's Garter, uh, Fountain Casino. Um, yeah, it, it was the bands were looking to make it. But in order to to fill these rooms, they had to play covers. Yeah. So let's take a band like Twisted Sister, for instance. They would come out and they would do the first set would be um it would be a mixture of originals and then covers and then they would pretty much have covers they didn't have enough originals zebra would play zeppelin to the t and then they would throw their own like they would throw a song in like um who's behind the door okay and then tell me what you want which becomes the biggest hit um yeah, but they would they would have to do like a mixture in fact in fact uh, if, I don't know if you remember the band called Phantoms Opera and uh, what's the name Bon Jovi's original bass player John Alex Such came out of that band so they would be playing they, they would try to work in their originals but they filled rooms by playing covers because you know there, there, were, there were bands that tried to do all uh, originals and nobody would go see them yeah, there's yeah. a lot of comics like that where they they just they try to do their own <laughs> jokes and they're just better off hacking other people. Doing, doing <laughs> 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 that works. 
I, I think of all those bands, Zebra is probably probably my favorite of, of that list that you. you know, oh, they were great. They I were think great. They were definitely an underrated band, but uh, agreed. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Southside Johnny and the uh, Jukes. I, I think I got to get the real album because the, the you know the live version. Meant it might have had some covers on there too. I don't know. I don't know what I listened to, but I, I think I got right. just. <laughs> Like, it's like last week when we just like you know one we couldn't find the album jeff had yeah. on eight track we were like, well, we'll just, just we'll do some dice content. oh that was dice uh, yeah i had to watch the special <laughs> right because i couldn't find the album so that's right because i have title and title doesn't always have all the stuff but you know i'm so anti-spotify that i have yeah. to, you know i have to stay in it very cool so uh, April is uh, the month of the fool. So we uh, we're covering comedians <laughs> and uh, comedic albums that uh, made an impact on us or whatever. And just so you know, guys, I don't think I think I'm the only one that does this on the show. I don't always pick the album that an album that I love. Like I feel like you guys always pick albums that you love. So be in the future, pick something you may not necessarily like. That's a it's just something, you know. So we can uh, force yourself to like hate it even more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I pick another comedy album, that'll be Billy Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying all kinds of stuff. We got to keep painting in this, in this art studio. All right, we're gonna. It's going. There's no consistency on this show. We try new shit every week to see yep. what is really gonna hit. But that's what I love about it. you guys. Go with me, and I appreciate that. So, Anthony, what do you got? Yeah. For the uh, comedic. Uh, segment what do you got yeah so i i picked an album that i do love uh nice. <laughs> by one of my by one of my favorite comedians mitch hedberg uh and this is uh mitch altogether his second album um came out in 2003 um recorded at the acme comedy club in minneapolis and so this is his second album uh, it was the last one that he made while he was alive. His third album came out after after he died. Um, and Mitch altogether, uh, the 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 title comes from a joke that is actually on his first album. So the joke's not even on on this one. But the the joke is something I, I'm not going to try to do like an impression of him. But the 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 joke that do, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the joke is something like a. Uh, uh, you know how they call corn on the cob, corn on the cob, uh, but th- that's how it comes out of the ground. They should call that corn. They should call every other version corn off the cob. It's uh, <laughs> it's not like if you cut off my arm, you would call my arm Mitch, but then reattach it and call it Mitch altogether. That's the <laughs> that's the joke where the title comes from for uh, nice. for this. Um, and so this the the album came with a, a DVD um, of his Comedy Central special, uh, the the edited and unedited version, which I think you can find the unedited version on YouTube now. Uh, and it's amazing to watch it because he's bombing for like almost the first twenty uh-huh. minutes out of he does like I don't know thirty seven thirty eight minutes or something like that, and all the stuff that he planned to be his special was not working with the audience because the audience was just there for taping. They didn't know who he was. Um, and so then he, he kind of starts switching gears and he starts doing like some older material. And that's mostly what you see on the comedy central special is uh, stuff that was on some, some previous albums and not necessarily the special he was intending to make, but it's cool because he, he, after 15 or 20 minutes, he starts winning them over and they just, they did not get what he was trying to do. Um, but that's that's one of the things I love about Mitch, Mitch Hedberg is uh, he was not for everybody. Uh, he was uh, kind of offbeat. And um, it's he's definitely uh, one of the biggest influences on me comedically. Uh, just, gr- you know, one great one-liners. Absurd. Um, just stuff that you hear some of his jokes and it's like sometimes the concepts are, are so simple, but you, you can't, you know, you can't believe you never thought of it, but he did. And, uh, uh, he was one of the best. So anyway, I love this album. What do you guys yeah, think? Yeah. 
this, you know, Mitch Hedberg, it's interesting. This uh, album is only 39 minutes. You know, I feel like uh, that was one thing that I was, I'm always surprised. You know, we're always trying to get that hour and it's like, yeah, just do 36 minutes. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a great album. Um, you know, Hedberg definitely, I think is one of the most influential comedians, you know, for contemporaries that we have. You know, there's a lot of comedians out of the gate started sounding like him. Aziz Nazari had a real, had the very, I mean, his first 10 years of comedy was all Mitch Hedberg sound, like delivery and cadence. And and that's the thing too, is like, to me, it's worse to to take a, a premise from a comic than it is to when you take their soul. And I so a lot of people kind of took what Mitch did. And Mitch was very kind of, never really looked at the audience. He always had like sunglasses on. Even in that in that DVD of the unedited, it's like there's a point where he said, "I've done this before too," where he's just like talking to the wall because the audience is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he turns then, around, right? <laughs> he turns around. He he lays on the steps. Like and I, I do all that kind of weird shit because I I just I I show everything when you don't like me, and so I love that about to me. That's a just a real comic, a, a tortured artist, if you will. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, this is a very tight album. Um, there's a lot of fun tracks. You know, I, I think, um, you know, I, I love the way it ends and, you know, X. And what was the uh, the last thing about uh, the dreaming, believing in dreams? I forget what that is. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of, uh, what is it? I'm tired of chasing my dreams. I'm just going to uh, ask where they're going and hook up with them later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just... And impeccable. And here's the thing is just like, you know, the three of us are comedians on here and the three of us need to really work on this. And it's called likability. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. Jesus none Christ. of us really have it. None of us do. And, and it's like a comedian like this has it, you know, and I've been working with Nate and Nate has it and certain people have it. And it's it's such a hard thing to kind of like, <clears throat> To, to it's like to we all have it in there but sometimes it just doesn't come out it comes out too structured we're trying to be a comic mm -hmm. as opposed to being ourselves and this guy as much as people think it was kind of this like shtick it was really him that's how he talked that's how he was he was kind of uncomfortable a bit of a drug addict things like that so there's a lot going on kind of with the energy of him i yeah. think at some point if you listen closely you can hear him kind of you can tell maybe, you know, he's sniffing a lot, you know, oh, yeah. like, things like that are interesting. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah. but yeah, it's like, I, I love a good joke, you know? And to me, it's, it's basically, it's like, he did it a little bit better than Stephen Wright in the sense of he made it even, it's so hard to make setup punch personal. And mm -hmm. I think there are elements that he would bring to it. I love the opening where he's just kind of making fun of the fact that, you know, this is my CD and some, and then my last CD, if I want to put it in stores, I had to leave it there, you know, like stuff yeah, like yeah. that, <laughs> kind of making fun of his journey and kind of, you know, making fun. And to me, that's what you didn't get from Stephen Wright. You never mm -hmm. got any sort of person that personability. You only got like these great jokes. And so I think Hedberg not only did these tight, quick jokes, but also added a little bit of himself mm -hmm. to it and made fun of himself. And so I think that's one thing that I love about him. And this is, this is definitely a great album. Jeff, what do you think about Mitchie Hedberg? Um, I have a little bit different take on it. I mean, I like, I like, to, I actually like the way like you guys do his jokes. Um, <laughs> no, because I'm, I wasn't a big fan. I am not a big fan of his cadence. I find mm -hmm. it like the same thing with Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. You know, I find it a little too herky jerky. I find it distracting. You know, um, but. I love like the cleverness and, you know, of, of, of the jokes. And I also like, you know, the style and because you don't see that as much anymore, the setup punch, setup punch. I think that's very hard to do, you know, uh, consistently, but I, but it's his cadence that kind of like takes me out of, of hanging in there, but the jokes themselves, like, like when I hear you guys recite them, you know, it, I laugh at it. I'll laugh at it more from you guys than, actually like listening to, to Mitch Hedberg. So I was never really a big fan of his. Interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I just think it's, you know, it's kind of like with Gaffigan where he kind of has, you know, there's like, there's, there's the points in voice. his voice where oh, it gets yeah. lower and higher. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. I enjoy that. I think it's. Um, See, I love Gaffigan. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I think <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's great, you know, but yeah, that's the thing. It's subjective. That's, you know, 
that's what art is but you know it's definitely i don't i don't think he's like who's the guy the italian guy can never say his name maniscalco yeah that i don't yeah i don't see him like that at all because to me that's full character you know where it's just like he's he's talking about his life but it's such a stereotype that it just feels i mean to me he's like dice he's like a light dice exactly but i I like dice's attitude better it's it's the it's that almost again i i keep referring to as a herky jerky type of thing like we you know that kind of like i'm like just fucking say it well you know dice will just go out and say it you know (laughs) how how do you uh god sorry how how do you feel about somebody like emo phillips I'm was, yeah, same exact same, same great thing. example same exact feeling but but i love stephen wright but but stephen wright got to it but yeah. he most felt like almost like pausing in the middle of a, of a word you know <laughs> i didn't hey, I, I think it, hedberg gets to it pretty quick i think yeah. I, I don't know That's not right. always especially on this album though because uh, compared to, to his quick. His yeah. his first album, he it was more laid back and and almost like a, a gentle delivery. Like he was much more timid, and this one he was a, kind of aggressive, louder, faster, uh, more confident sounding. Hmm. Yeah, well, I feel like I'm herky jerky. You know, I, I that, that, if I would describe myself, you guys see me. I, I'm jerky. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when I'm you're just listening to you, if I'm listening to you, to you. You know, you're you're telling the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, you got to understand. There's a lot going on here. There's um, and drugs were actually a huge part of mm-hmm. this. And uh, much like a lot of other artists we've covered, Winehouse and different people. And for a comedian, it's it's sometimes it's a little different because you can kind of drug your way through a song, and I don't think you pick up on you know maybe you know the scatteredness of the person but on a joke when you're talking and doing jokes you know i feel you feel it a little more so you could there is kind of a high vibe to it you know yeah. where Chappelle always had kind of a high vibe tony woods has a high vibe like there's certain people the drugs kind of kennison had a cocaine kind of high energy vibe and so it's like you know you can kind of if it, he's definitely for potheads you know mm-hmm. I feel like he was like the pothead comic, you know, he was, it's like, if you like fish, you probably like Hedberg. You know? Yep. <laughs> that's a that's good, like, it's a, it's a good comparison. Like, yeah. It's kind of, he's kind of the pothead comic, you know, it's yeah. like, it, cause it's so quick, it, you know, you got to get to it because a pothead, you know, can't listen to a story for very long. You know what I mean? Like a, a pothead needs a punchline immediately about food. And, <laughs> and <it's> like, <laughs> I mean, you know, there's certain guys that are very influenced by him. Dimitri Martin is, has been criticized being that he's too Mitch Hedberg and things like that. And so there's a lot, you know, he's definitely made his mark on kind of the modern standup. You know, I feel like a lot of people kind of went down that weird road, you know, and, and Anthony definitely had some influence and people and, but, you know, and Anthony, you know, you could tell he's a student of these guys. And so, you, you know, you take, you take your own energy and then kind of, you know, give tribute to and stuff. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's how comedy, you know, kind of evolves. And we, we you know, one person takes it and gets a little better and, and so on. But Adam, how do you feel about this album? <clears throat> well, I definitely uh, felt that I should be stoned listening to this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it helps. Yeah. And, and uh, Anthony's you know, got uh, me. He's got some. <laughs> <laughs> um, his, so yeah, the cadence, uh, you know, I, at first I kept, uh, I kept thinking of, um, you know, the comparison between him and Stephen Wright. I think Stephen Wright was more structured. Um, Mitch Hedberg, the his cadence was a bit uh, off-putting at first, but I started to get really get into it as I listened to more and more of the CD. But um, I think uh, the thing with him is that there's a feeling of effortless, like th- that what he's doing is very effortless, that he's, um, um, and just like you said, like lay that laid back, easygoing kind of vibe that's going through it. Um, I mean, I really, you know, there's there's a lot here I enjoyed. I, I listened to a lot of this while I was driving, so I didn't get a chance to write down which tracks. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just, you know, you have, um, you know, you have things that work on here. You have that uh, things that don't. But but um, yeah, I mean, I, I overall, I pretty much enjoyed this album. Yeah, yeah. it's you know, it's definitely. It, not for everybody, but I enjoy it. And I think I enjoy him as a comic, you know, as much as I enjoy the material. And because, I mean, Anthony knows, you know, and Jeff knows, and, you know, probably Anthony a lot 
you know, just because towards the end, it was me and Anthony a lot on shows and stuff. But it's like, you know, I'm, I have so much anxiety when I perform. And I always feel like even if it's 5,000 people or if it's six people, it's like it's the same exact anxiety. And it's like, and listening to his anxiety come through is, it's like, it just, it touches me because then I feel like, okay, even guys at a certain level of, of his success still have that because mm-hmm. he was pretty big when he did this album. I mean, people were, you know, he's headlining big clubs and theaters and stuff. So he's starting to kind of get momentum. And so even at that level, you know, there's the anxiety of hating yourself on stage. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I just, I respond to that in just such a, you know, endearing way. Cause I just, you know, I get what that is, you know, where you're just like, you know, just like even, and at the end it was like, yeah, come on, applause, get the applause on the CD. Right. Like just the all the yeah. stuff that it's just, you know, we're just, we just want to be loved. And uh, I feel he, his story is a tragedy. Um, mm-hmm. It's very unfortunate. What, what is he, his story? He OD'd and died of heroin overdose. Jesus. He was shooting in up hotel. In his, in his hotel. Yeah, he was shooting uh, up in his yeah. leg. And for years, and you know, nobody, nobody knew, and some people knew, and it just, you know, just kind of became a problem. Did you, but, uh, did you ever yeah. work with him? I did not work with him. No, I, um, I went to his wake in Manhattan. And uh, I was a little, a little wasted when I went, but I, cause I thought it was appropriate, but um, it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was like comedians that were, you know, if you've ever been to a comedian's wake, it's, it's sometimes it's, you, it's the best comedy you'll ever see. And why, Patrice, why O'Neal's, Patrice O'Neill's was amazing. And then, um, you know, Mitch Hedberg was great. What was great about Mitch Hedberg, uh, David Tell was really funny. Um, he was just like, you know, a lot of people told me, that uh, hey Dave, why didn't you say anything to Mitch Hedberg about the drugs? And he's like, really? Well, me saying something to Mitch Hedberg about drugs is like a hooker telling a stripper she's wearing too much makeup. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it, was, it was like these funny things people said, and you know, because comedians are still gonna be funny even when their friend dies, you know. I, you know, so. But yeah, I think he was. Uh, I think he was great, man, and I'm glad a lot of kids are getting into him. I think he's his comedy still lives on. I think a lot of people still kind of get into it. So, yeah, it holds up. I mean, it it aged well. I think. Yeah, Yeah. it's you know, he's it's just a different kind of thing, man. And so, Emo Phillips, you know, that's the same kind of like. It's funny you brought him up. I I like him too. I do. I do know. I do know him pretty well. We spent like about four days together in a in kind of a Airbnb once. Oh, nice. uh, So I got to kind of you know hang with him and. You know, and some of these He's guys great. are just so weird, and it's like, you know, and that's what's my friends with Anthony. I love weird people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Mitch Edberg was like a weird guy, so I could see people not liking it because it's too weird. But uh, the weirder, the better for me. You know, it's like, uh, so yeah, you know, good stuff. All right, man. I guess uh, I don't know if we had anything planned at the end, but. We didn't have any memes. Do you have memes or something, Adam, or no? Yeah, let me see if I can show one off here. Uh, nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, memes. Uh, music memes. Music memes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Some, and, and this is going to be, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be reversed, but uh, let me see if I can read this. We're going to have to. Oh, you're going to do this here. Later, right? You're right. Is that Natalie right. Cuomo? Right. So it says, <laughs> I am a new artist. And then we got Kiss down here. We say, I hate you. New music sucks. Old music rules. I'm 55 and music can only be good if it was made while I was in high school. My wife <laughs> left me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the wife. My wife left, my wife left me. Uh, <laughs> that's the best part. I don't know. You did memes, Jeff. Hey, yo. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Okay, a couple of days ago, someone called the band Kiss Boomer Juggalos, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. There we go. <laughs> so now we can see on that uh, photo there. That's nice. great. Yeah. Oh, I I forgot to mention uh, because Mitch Hedberg had a music joke, and I and I wrote it down so I could mention it. Um, We're going to close it out. What do you got? Okay, I have no problem not listening to the Temptations, which is weird. Yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do a meme, kids. <laughs> all right, guys, this was a weird one, and we we're all over the place. And um, my tech went out, and uh, Adam's going to be editing this uh, right. for four days. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Twitch deserves a bad episode sometimes. But no, it was good. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> 
Jeff, get better, man. Take Thank some you. Tylenol. Yeah, feel better. Some, glad, you're some alive. <laughs> glad you're alive. Glad you're alive. Oh, I was taking heavier stuff than Tylenol. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, uh, we weed's legal in New Jersey now. <laughs> is it? Oh, that's right. It, it just, they just started started uh, selling um, last week. It makes living in Jersey a little bit more bearable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. We'll see you. Good work. Bye, guys. Love, love, love. Buy music uh, at the local record store. And check out our YouTube page. We hit 100, which is very exciting. And uh, we need more listeners and more viewers. So if you guys could hit our YouTube Dustin Vinyl page and be a subscriber, we'd really appreciate it. And we got more coming. We got a bunch of stuff. And we uh, want to start there. So if you could subscribe. Thank you. All right, everybody. Listen to Vinyl. Rock and roll. Bye, folks. Look both ways before you cross the street. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs>